Last night, the tournament winning scores on FanDuel were in the 300s. And that can be frustrating because it means you've got to have basically the nuts to take down the tournament, which is true always, but was more true last night. I don't think we'll have that issue for today because it is pretty tough to find really good offenses on tonight's slate for MLB DFS. Just a five-game slate, and a lot of the offenses here are facing pretty good pitchers. So one of our top three stacks is against a pitcher I really like, but I think we have to go that way for DFS. So slim on offense, good pitching. Let's dive on in and get you set for tonight's slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Here to break down Thursday's five-game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. And with just five games, there is no weather to know for today. Some spots a little bit warmer than typical, so take note of that for sure because could get a boost for offense there. Specifically, we're looking um, in Washington for the Phillies and Nationals. That's a bit warm there. And then in Detroit for the Rangers and Tigers. Both those spots, good spots for hitting, and that's fortuitous because our top, uh, our two Process-based stacks are both in those two games. So that should be a sigh of relief for tonight. We'll break down the pitching preview and more in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We, of course, have this MLB DFS podcast every weekday. But also, Austin Swain breaks down UFC every Friday. There is a good slate there. No NASCAR this week because of the off week. But back again next week, I believe, for Nashville. And of course, PGA DFS podcasts every week as well, all in the same place. So you got to do is all you got to do is hit subscribe. Those podcasts come to you as they're posted. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Hey, sports fans, there's no better time than today to sign up for FanDuel Fantasy. If you've not yet done so, you can deposit today to receive two free entries. All you have to do is deposit a minimum of $10 into your FanDuel DFS account, and you will be instantly rewarded with two free vouchers. This is a limited time offer, so be sure to deposit now and play for free. Head over to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate. Zach Wheeler is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel, checking in at $10,600. Followed by Martin Perez at 10.5. Luis Severino is 10.4. Shohei Otani is pitching tonight. He is 10.2. We got George Kirby at 94 with Tyler McGill at 92. And Aaron Ashby is the only other guy at $8,000 or higher. So pitching... Not bad, uh, given it's a, a five-game slate, only 10 pitchers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, 8,000 or higher. That's not too bad. It will, uh, we will, we're reaping now. We will sow uh, later on with the stacking discussion. But pitching is pretty good. I'm going to put Luis Severino at the top of my pitching pool for tonight. He is at home against the Rays, and it's kind of a sneaky good spot. The Rays active roster has a 97 WRC plus against righties so far this year. They're not putting the ball in the air too much. That's a big thing for Severino because he's been leaning more on his slider across his past six starts. It's a good pitch, but it does let up a lot of impactful contact, which is true of most sliders. He has a 44% fly ball rate in this time with a 43% our hit rate, but the Rays are a lower loft team. That's a plus for Severino. And the Rays will strike out. They have a 25% strikeout rate against righties this year. That is the second highest mark on the slate. Severino is generating plenty of those by himself with a 34% strikeout rate across his past six starts. That leads to a 2.58 skill interactive ERA despite all the fly balls. That's helped Severino post a 2.19 ERA in this time. He did face the Rays back on May 29th, so there is some familiarity here. But he got eight strikeouts and six in the third innings in that game. We've seen Severino hit double-digit strikeouts in both his starts since then as well. So he's a really good pitcher. He's at home. He's in a matchup that suits his downsides well. I think we should put Severino number one, even on a pretty good slate for pitching for tonight. The second spot is between Zach Wheeler and Shohei Otani, and I could easily go either way. I'm going to give Wheeler a slight edge here. But it is pretty close. Wheeler is on the road against the Nationals. Otani is on the road against the Mariners. So both on the road, and neither team strike that strikes out much. So it kind of comes down to your preference between the two pitchers. I like Wheeler due to the bad at ball data. He's been cutting back on a sinker across his past six starts, and that's pushed his strikeout rate up to 34%. Now, the concern would be 
fewer sinkers, more strikeouts, maybe he's not going to do as good of a job with contact suppression as he has done in the past. Hasn't happened. He has a 35% hard hit rate in this time with a 27% fly ball rate. Otani is at 37 and 41% respectively. That helps Wheeler have a 2.20 skill interactive ERA, which is the best number on the slate. I've got Wheeler projected for eight strikeouts, uh, which is second behind Severino. Otani ranks third at 7.4. So if you have a strong lean toward Otani, I would say go with it. I just like Wheeler more myself and will rank him second behind Severino. So to me, it's Severino one, Wheeler two, Otani three, and we'll talk more about him and things to watch. Among the values, I think Aaron Ashby is the only viable guy right now, given pitch counts and stuff like that. And even Ashby has his flaws, but I still like him enough to use him here. He's facing the Mets. That is the key point of detraction for me because the Mets have just a 21% strikeout rate against lefties with a 113 WRC+. plus. I don't want to target guys for facing them. But Ashby is pretty solid. He is fully stretched out now, and I've got him projected at 100 pitches for tonight. And he still maintained the good rate stats that he had when he was in more of a hybrid type role. In the past four starts, Ashby has a 28% strikeout rate. He's let up just a 17% fly ball rate. That is uh, some Framber Valdez type stuff with a 2.454 ERA. So really good numbers for Ashby. He did struggle his last time out. He let up six earned runs to the Nationals. He let up four the start before that. So he's a value play for a reason, but he does have single game upside. He had 12 strikeouts in one of the games, nine in another, and that's despite having three of his four starts on the road. He's on the road against Knight, but, you know, I think that's encouraging that he's had success there in the past. I would like to not use Ashby in this spot because, again, I, don't, I think the Mets are not an ideal offense to target, but there is enough good in Ashby's profile to feel fine about it. It's a small slate. He's $8,200. I think he checks the main boxes here. It makes him a fine option. He's below Otani because I think that Otani has – a more clear path to a ceiling game, but I wouldn't be shocked if I wanted to put Ashby in my player pool in part because I think I have to be hyper concentrated with my stacks. Let's talk about that now. Typically when I'm building out multi-entry stuff, I will have a tight core pitcher, you know, two, three, sometimes four guys, but it's mainly two or three and then differentiate a bit more in the stacks tonight. I might go with the four pitchers and potentially just have more focused stacks. I think the top two stacks for me are in a tier of their own. And those two stacks are the Rangers and the Phillies. Let's talk about them now. The Rangers are not a team I've stacked often this year, but I will be doing it tonight. I think that they are the top option for this slate. They're facing Bo Brisky, and Brisky has been a bit better than I expected him to be when he first got called up. He has a 4.34 ERA across nine starts, which is actually not too bad. But his peripherals say that could come up. Namely, his expected ERA at baseball savant is 6.42, which is more, more than two runs higher than his actual number so far. That number is high mostly due to the batted ball issues for Brisky. He's letting up a 44% hard hit rate with a 43% fly ball rate. So he's getting tagged hard, and that's on a lot of balls in play. He has a 15% strikeout rate with a 7% walk rate. Some guys do outperform their peripherals in a large sample, and that could be Brisky, but typically those guys who outperform peripherals do so via suppressing hard contact, and Brisky does the opposite of that. So I'm not willing to buy into the results yet. I'm still putting more weight into the peripherals, and those peripherals say we should stack against him, and I will do that with the Rangers for tonight. We often talk about building blocks uh, within stacks. You know, the guy you focus on, Jazz Chisholm for the Marlins is the primary obvious one i you know if i'm stacking the marlins he'll be in pretty much every lineup i think that adelis garcia is that guy for the rangers even against a righty he is the power with a 218 iso against righties uh he also has seven steals moderate strikeout rate so in terms of prioritization you do have seeker you've got semi in they're hitting the ball better recently i and they have lower salaries but i still think garcia has to be the number one guy so Adelis Garcia, probably going to be in most of my Ranger stacks if I can afford to get there, which I think I can given, you know, Semyon's pretty low salaried. Uh, same thing for Seager. I could probably make that work. So if you need a building block for your stack, I would say that guy for the Rangers will, will be Adelis Garcia. Patrick Corbin start for the Nationals for today. And the velocity for Corbin has been on the rise recently. And that's a good thing in theory. 
But it still hasn't helped his results, which makes the Phillies the obvious number two stack. For Corbin, his velocity has been up for his past six starts, and he's let up three-plus earned runs in all of those. So despite the increased velo, still letting up a lot of runs. His ERA is 7.22. Skill Interactive ERA is 4.32 with a 15% strikeout rate. The one thing Corbin has done well is increase his ground ball rate, and that's a plus. But he's still letting up a 44% hit rate. So even if he's putting it on the ground, it's getting smoked and getting through. The Phillies have their issues, but offense, not one of them right now. They have a 123 WRC plus against lefties with a 198 ISO. Both those are the best marks on the slate. So I think we should load up on them here, given the matchup, given the fact they are pretty good against lefties. Uh, the weather is good too. Phillies to me, definitively two and potentially one. I'd go either way on this one. But I think the one guy we should give the biggest boost to against the lefty for the Phillies is Alec Bohm. He has a 238 ISO against uh, lefties this year. He has a 190 ISO against lefties for his career. His ISO against righties this year is 046. That is a massive gap. Even for you know lefties, you don't always see that big of a gap in their ISO between righties and lefties. But Bohm, massive, massive boost based on having the platoon advantage. I don't use Boom against righties. I will happily use him here against the lefty. I would also mention that, you know, despite being lefties, Kyle Schwarber, Bryce Harper, both have very good numbers against lefties. So bump up Boom a lot, and he'll probably be the, the key building block within the Philly stacks for today, just to give me more access to the high upside righties on that team and lefties on that team as well. For the third stack, I don't know, man. It's tough because I think I feel great about those two and I want to build around those top two stacks and I will build around those two top two stacks, but I can't have a four by four stack in every single lineup. I'll need to differentiate somewhere, especially if I'm going Wheeler. I can't go uh, four by four there. So I got to find a third team to go to. And I think that team is going to be the Angels. They're facing George Kirby. And this is really just a play to try to maximize the number of hard hit balls because I like Kirby. I think he's done some really nice things so far. I've used him as a pitcher, uh, and the results reflect what he's doing, a 3.65 ERA. But a couple of things he's doing are conducive to stacking. The first one is that Kirby lets up a lot of balls in play. He's around 75% through seven starts. 75% of his plate appearances result in a ball in play. 44% of those are hard hits, and 42% are in the air. That leaves him open to some pretty serious danger. And I would expect a dinger problem to crop up here at times. And we have seen that. We've seen him let up homers, uh, two homers, multiple home runs in three out of seven starts. One of those was his most recent start, which was at home against Boston. The Angels have a weird, you know, air around them now, given the losing streak, the managerial change, but like they're still a solid offense. So 114 WRC plus against righties, a 41% fly ball rate, a 183 ISO, they will strike out, so Kirby could do well here. Again, he's a good pitcher, but I like their upside enough. I should say I like it enough. So I'll rank the Angels third here, but they are several tiers behind the top two options for me. So to me, it's it's a tier thing where Rangers, Phillies, top tier. There's nothing in tier two. Angels in tier three for me. Kirby weirdly has a much lower strikeout rate against righties and lefties. It is 17% for righties, 27% against lefties, which isn't a terrible thing because we can't use Shohei Otani as a hitter tonight anyway. So, you know, it's whatever. Like, that's fine. You can take out lefties. But I do think it boosts the appeal in Taylor Ward. He hasn't looked great in his first two games back. He, you know, has one hard hit ball across eight plate appearances, I think three strikeouts. That's not ideal, but it's a small sample. Maybe that bounces back here tonight. I'd also be in on Max Stassi if he starts. Anthony Rendon, I would downgrade due to the wrist injury, but if he plays, uh, but could still be there as well. So the, the right-handed Angels get a boost here, which means that Mike Trout guy might be okay for tonight. Things to watch. Let's stick with the Angels and talk about Shohei Otani. I would rank him above Aaron Ashby, despite the salary difference between them. I just can't quite put Otani above Wheeler due to the reasons mentioned before, but Otani's upside is absurd. Uh, the matchup for him, I think, is better than Ashby's as well. So Otani ranks third for me. I think you kind of need exposure every time he pitches just because he can have a seven shutout inning, 12 strikeout game. So if he's out there, I'm going to use him just because he can he can win you a slate. Uh, but I would put him third behind Wheeler and a Severino, but above Ashby for tonight. Wouldn't be shocked if I get to use all four 
though, due to the nature of the stacking. I'm not going to get to Martin Perez today, despite the great matchup. I'm not skeptical to what he's done. Um, I think that you look at like the uh, expected ERA stuff like that. Like, yeah, he's had a couple rough starts recently, but I think it's probably pretty legit. So I'm not, you know, I'm not skeptical of him because of him. I'm just skeptical of the upside in terms of DFS. He hasn't had more than seven strikeouts yet this year, which basically means if you use Perez, you're betting on one of Wheeler, Severino, Otani, or Ashby to come up short in the strikeout department. And at least one of them, I think, will have a good night. So you need a lot of guys to fail for Perez to be the number one guy. He could because the matchup is so sweet, but I just want more upside. I think those guys give it to me there. So it's not a him thing, like in terms of like, I think he'll regress in terms of his ERA and stuff. It's more so I just want more strikeout upside. The Yankees are in play tonight for stacking. The Rays are going to the bullpen game. They'll have Jalen Beek start, and I've got him projected for around 40 pitches. So Beeks has been good so far this year, but it's a lot of exposure to middle relievers who may be going longer than they typically do. That's a good thing for stacking. So the Yankees fourth for me in stacks. I feel better about the Angels than I do about them, but the Yankees are fine. They're fourth. If you want to get some one-offs there, not opposed to that. Let's finish up here with our dinger calls for today. The boring one was alluded to previously. That Mike Trout guy facing a, a righty who lets up hard contact and doesn't get a lot of strikeouts against righties. Probably a good situation to go with Mike Trout. So Mike Trout will be the dinger call for tonight. Uh, the boring one, that is 338 ISO against right. He's a 59% fly ball rate. He's dumb. The fun one is Alec Bohm facing a lefty. Uh, gets better, bad at ball numbers. Hits for more power in those situations. Facing Corbin, who's having a lot of hard contact issues right now. A lot of balls in play. So home run calls for this Thursday slate. Mike Trout and Alec Bohm. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Once again, quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel podcast network at FanDuel podcast. Good luck tonight. I think that, again, the stacking is going to be pretty interesting. So hopefully you find hitters who got some upside. Hopefully you have some fun. Hopefully you win some money. We'll talk to you once again on Friday to break down another slate of MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.